Time for focus, and today we're heading to Chile after a panel found that Pablo Neruda didn't die of cancer, as his death certificate indicated, in 1973. The poet and senator from the Communist Party died two weeks after the military coup of Augusto Pinochet toppled the leftist government of Salvador Allende. The conclusion of international forensic experts increasing speculation that Neruda may have been murdered. Breaking news. 44 years after the death of Chilean poet Pablo Neruda, the announcement of these scientific results. The fundamental conclusions are the invalidation of the death certificate where it says that cancer cachexia was the cause of death. All our research excludes that cause. Nonetheless, we cannot today exclude or confirm the nature of Pablo Neruda's death, whether it's natural or violent. Pablo Neruda did not die of cancer, but still the mystery remains. A new bacteria has been found in one of his teeth. Scientists want to do more analysis. They say their work should take between six months and a year. The new tests should determine if Pablo Neruda was murdered or not. The latest partial results are a significant breakthrough for the poet's family. I'm very satisfied because we have for the first time after so much time an official version that Pablo Neruda did not have cachexia and did not die of cancer. So today I believe more than ever in a third party intervention in the death of Uncle Pablo. Pablo Neruda's chauffeur was also waiting for the results. He's one of the last people who saw Pablo Neruda alive. He has no doubt it's a murder. Pablo Neruda called me and said I was sleeping when a doctor came in and gave me a shot in the stomach. When I arrived at the hospital, Pablo was red. He told me, I'm burning inside, Manuel. So I put a towel on his stomach to clear the fever, and at that very moment a doctor came in and ordered me to go and buy some medicine. I went out, and the military arrested me, and I could not attend Pablo Neruda's funeral. <laughs> Pablo Neruda died on September the 23rd, 1973. He was 69. Friends and supporters accompany him to the cemetery. It's a funeral procession in which their lives are at risk from the rifles of the military. As soon as Pinochet came to power, his dictatorship hunted down his political opponents from the left. In 2016, the poet is buried again, this time at home, in accordance with his wishes. His body had been exhumed as part of an investigation to determine the cause of his death, which came just 12 days after the coup and on the eve of his departure into exile. The case would have remained closed if it weren't for a tenacious judge, a champion of human rights in Chile, and for the Communist Party, which in 2011 decides to do everything possible to take the case to court. More than 40 years after the coup, there's no indication that this building is home to the Communist Party offices. We're told that this is to avoid insulting graffiti. The party's president, who is close to the Nobel Prize winning poet, is categorical. There's no doubt that the dictatorship could have ordered the murder of Pablo Neruda. If they can prove that it was a crime, I would like to see justice carried out. It happened such a long time ago. Those who were responsible might even be dead. But at least I would like to expose the methods of the dictatorship so that history doesn't repeat itself. This judge has overseen the case since the Communist Party started legal action in 2011. He's the one who ordered the exhumation of the body of socialist president Salvador Allende, who committed suicide on the day of Pinochet's coup. In the Neruda case, the judge took the unprecedented step of convening a group of international experts. They come from six countries, including Canada, the United States and France. The toxicologists and urologists gathered behind closed doors for a week to compare their results. The whole investigation follows a line of transparency and a line of scientific certainty. 
We, the judges, have a great responsibility. In this case, mine is huge. And the decision I take will, in some way, have big consequences for society. The Neruda case, which is being followed far beyond Chile, should continue, and lots of resources are being dedicated to it. For human rights groups, it should serve as an example for the judicial cases of other victims of the dictatorship. There are more than 1,200 investigations in progress, and they face a silence that stops culprits from being found. Forming a group of local and foreign experts will certainly reinforce the decision that the judge may take. We think that it's very important that, in this case and in all the other ones, the Chilean state uses all the necessary resources so that families and society find out what happened to many people who died or disappeared during the dictatorship. Chile is about to hold a presidential election, with the first round scheduled for November the 19th. The Neruda case hasn't featured in the electoral campaign. Socialist President Michel Bachelet can't run for re-election. Sebastián Piñera, a moderate right-wing candidate who is backed by some Pinochet supporters, is favourite in the polls. For this political reporter who works at Chile's most popular radio station, the Neruda case should follow its course, whoever the next president is. Obviously there's always fear, especially from Pablo Neruda's relatives and the Communist Party, about whether a right-wing president could restrain the investigation to determine what happened to the poet Pablo Neruda. But the facts show that Sebastian Piñera is a center-right politician. He could perfectly continue the investigation, which today is working to know the truth. Pablo Neruda's relatives and closest friends hope the investigation will finally establish the circumstances under which Neruda died. The poet could have been a leading opponent of Pinochet's dictatorship. It's a duty of truth for the poet and a democratic obligation for an entire country. Joining me now is Daniel Landsberg Rodriguez. He teaches on Latin America at Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. Hello, thank you very much indeed for your time. Now, if thank this panel of international experts ends up concluding that Pablo Neruda was indeed murdered, what would that mean for Chile? Well, I think that that's a, a, a complicated question. A belief of as to whether uh, Neruda was assassinated, whether he died of illness, uh, that tends to uh, represent a bit of a Rorschach test uh, for Chileans and for many uh, Latin Americans and people the world over. Uh, it'll oft, belief there will often tell you more about where a person stands on certain political issues, uh, on uh, the political spectrum, than it will tell you about the actual uh, evidence in the case, which uh, until recently has been, has been very sparse. What we do know is that he died shortly after uh, Pinochet's uh, takeover of the government. Uh, we know that he was very sick beforehand. Uh, but in, in a sense, it's a very similar situation to the death of Allende himself, who, depending on who you ask, it is either a suicide uh, or it was a murder by Pinochet's forces. So there is an extent to which, uh, regardless of what the outcome of the findings are, uh, even how persuasive they may be in one direction or the other, I think that uh, many Chileans and many people who are Latin American in the world will never fully a, a disengage from uh, the, the belief that their, that their politics may have given them. And we've seen that uh, multiple times uh, with Allende's death, uh, where uh, there have been multiple inquiries, all of which have uh, come to the conclusion that Allende committed suicide while the palace was under attack. Uh, but the, uh, the, the narrative that he was killed uh, has been uh, you know, very powerful, and I'm sure there will be further uh, investigations into uh, Allende's death, much as there have been multiple investigations into Neruda's. Uh, so I don't necessarily think that the evidence on this case will, will change that narrative, although it is obviously a great uh, issue in terms of historical importance uh, to the country itself. Now, 
Pablo Neruda, according to this panel, didn't die of cancer, but as you mentioned, he was sick, mm -hmm. and also he was planning on leaving the country. He'd been offered asylum in Mexico. So just how much That's of a thorn in Pinochet's side would he have been um, had he stayed? How much of a motive would the authorities have had to get rid of him if that was the case? Uh, well, that will forever remain an open question. From a tactical standpoint, given uh, what I know of his health at the time, uh, it wouldn't have necessarily made much sense uh, for the government to be too uh, uh, strong-armed against him. That said, there was a, a lot of expectation uh, that Nuru would not survive the process. In fact, there were reports that he had been killed in the fighting. Uh, then there were reports that he had been killed when uh, the governments uh, ransacked his house, which they did do. Uh, and then when the reports that he had died of, uh, of the cancer uh, first broke, uh, it, was, it was the third one, it was the third such report to have happened. Uh, so there was an expectation among the left that he was a, a, a power center that the government would have to neutralize one way or another. Uh, that said, uh, from Mexico, which has a long tradition of taking in uh, political exiles, uh, such as uh, Leon Trotsky, for example, uh, on the left, uh, it, it, it's, it's not certain how much importance he would have had. In fact, Neruda's political poetry uh, while there are some very important uh, pieces to it, uh, and while he was very active politically personally, uh, his writing was, uh, I would say, poet poetry first and politics second. Uh, it's difficult to know how, how, how powerful he could have been as a voice against Pinochet. Uh, but in the polarized Cold War era, uh, I think that the, uh, the, the, the extent to which it would have been a, a more of a problem uh, to the government, then the perceptions that they may have had him killed uh, is unlikely uh, from Mexico, especially given that he may not have had much time left uh, once he once he got there. All right. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed, Daniel Landsberg Rodriguez, for your time and your analysis. Thank you for having me.